Hi guys, welcome to the chapter 1 introduction to functions video. This is section 1.1 relations and functions and section 1.2 function notation. So I've included a list of things that you guys should be able to do by the end of this chapter, but feel free to come back to this whenever you guys want. So this is a list of things we're going to be covering in this video. And so we're going to jump right into it. So domain and range we're going to be covering in section 1.4 in more detail, but very briefly, a domain is a set of all values of the independent variable of a relation. So whenever we talk about domain, it's always about the x values. And the range, which is the set of all values of the dependent variable of a relation, is always in regards to the y value. So a relation, which is probably something you guys have seen in the past, um, is a set of ordered pairs, so x, y, 1, 2, or 3, 4. These are all ordered pairs. So the values of the independent variable are paired with values of the dependent variable. So a function, which is probably a newer idea, is a type of relation where each value of the independent variable corresponds with only one value of the dependent variable. So an x value only produces one y value. And how I like to think of this is a relation is broad and a function, because it's a subset of relations, is represented in this smaller circle because it's more limiting. So every function is a relation but not every relation is a function. So just to solidify this idea, um, a relation versus a function. So a relation, in this example, the same x value produces multiple y values. But in a function, one x value produces only one y value. And so basically, you can see this in the graph, because when x is equal to 4 over here, there's three different values, and this is not a function. A function for every x value shows a unique y value. So to represent this, firstly, we can represent this using words. So for instance, Annie has a part-time job that pays $10 an hour. We can use a table of values where this is x and this is y. So if Annie works for one hour, she gets paid $10. But if she works for two, she gets paid $20 and so on. So we can also represent that using the coordinates in a set where this is x and this is the corresponding y value. The same thing goes for using a graph where we can graph one x value and that'll produce one y value. Um, you've probably seen a lot of these before. You can map out, this is x, and this is the corresponding y value. So for one hour, and he earns $10, and so on. So you can test this using this equation right here. And all you care about is that whenever you substitute a value in for x, you only get one y value. So to test for a function, firstly, we have the vertical line test. And this means if no two points can be connected by a vertical line, then the graph represents a function. So if I draw a line on my relation, and there's only one point at which the graph connects with my line, then this is a function. So for instance, if I draw a vertical line over here, there's two points in which this graph connects with my line. And that means this is not a function because it's only supposed to connect once. So basically, the problem with this is when x is equal to 2, there's two y values that correspond with this. But in this example, if I draw a vertical line at any point on this graph, there's only one point that corresponds with my line on this graph. So the same thing over here. If I draw 
vertical lines at any point, there's only one point that connects with my line, and these two are both functions. So we have the equations test, which is the second way you can test for a function. If a value of x can produce more than one value of y, the equation does not represent a function. So essentially, you're looking for one x value to produce one y value. So here are a few examples. If I substitute any x value, so maybe 3, y is equal to 4, x is equal to 3, 12 minus 8, and that is just going to give me 4. So this represents a function. Because I can pick any value. It doesn't just have to be 3. It could be 4, 5, 6, 7. I will only get one y value. So the same thing goes for x is equal to y squared. If I put 64 is equal to x equals y squared, y is equal to plus or minus 8. So here we run into a problem. Because if I square root both sides, y is equal to plus or minus 8. Plus 8 or minus 8. If I square each of these, I'm going to get 64. And this is not a function because there's two x values that will produce the same y value. So in this example, if I substitute 3 for x, then y squared is equal to 16. And if I square root both sides, y is equal to plus or minus 4. So the problem with this is it can be plus 4 or minus 4. And if you square both of them, you get 16, which means this is not a function. So for y squared equals x squared, this is supposed to be x squared, y equals x squared, so y is equal to 5 squared, meaning y is equal to 25. This is a function. So note the difference between b and d. There's two values over here, but there's only one unique value in d. So basically we're going to be talking about function notation and just a different way of writing an equation. So the notation is f of x, and that's used to represent the value of the dependent variable, which is the output of a given independent variable, which is the input, so x. So for instance, we have y equals 2x cubed plus 8, and that's just f of x is equal to 2x cubed plus 8. So essentially, I just replaced y with f of x. Okay, so if this is f of x, here are a few examples. So this is f of x. So if x is 0, if x is 0, then y is equal to negative 1. And so f at 4 over here, so that just means x is equal to 4 y is equal to 15. So f at 4 equals to 15. And it's the same thing over here, negative 4, y is equal to 15. So this one's a little bit different because f of x is equal to 3. For, so for some x value, y is going to be equal to 3. So if y is equal to 3, what is the corresponding x value? So at x is 2, y is equal to 3. So f at 2 should be equal to 3. Okay, so the composition of f of g of x is defined as f of g of x, which is equal to f of g of x. So these are the exact same thing. There are two different ways of writing the exact same thing. And basically what this means is, is f of x, if f of x is one function, 
and if g of x is a different function, we're going to make one a function of the other. So for instance, if I had f of x is equal to x minus 1, which looks like this, and g of x is equal to x squared, which looks like this, g of f of x, because this is the outside function and this is the inside function, would be x minus 1 squared, because f of x goes into g of x, and I'll explain this properly in the next slide. That'll create a new function, which has a transformation, which we'll talk about in the next few videos. So basically, this is function one, this is function two, and this is your new function. And that's all a composition of function is. So in this example, if f of x is equal to 2x squared, the graph of 2x squared looks like this. Something like that. Well, maybe not f of x. And the graph of g of x looks something like this. The graph of h of x, 1 over x, looks something like that. We're going to make new functions. So basically how I like to think of this is the one on the outside is the big function. So f of x is equal to big. And g of x is the small function. So g of x is equal to small. And small goes inside big. So if this is f of x, g of x goes inside here. And basically what that means is I've, I'm going to put this g of x function in for x. In my f of x function. So basically if I do that, negative 6x plus 1 squared, I need to expand this. And basically, I'll get 36x squared minus 12x plus 1. And then I'm going to put that right over here. And what I'll get is if I just expand all this out, I should get 72x squared minus 24x plus and so it's essentially the same thing over here. This is the big function, f of x, and this is the small function. So small goes inside big, and that means h of x goes in here. And basically, I sub in h of x. So first, I need to square each of these, 1 squared over x squared, which is just 2 times 1 over x squared, because 1 squared is just 1, and that just simplifies to 2 over x squared. And the same thing over here, this is big, and in this case, this is small. I know this is a little bit repetitive, but feel free to skip over this part if you don't think this is useful. So... This is the small function, f of x, g of x is the big function, and basically I just put f of x, which is 2x squared, in for x, plus 1, and then I'm going to expand this, and I should get negative 12x squared plus 1. And so basically if you compare each of these graphs with the answer you get over here, so this graph looks something like this but it's made from f of x and g of x by combining those two functions. This one, on the other hand, gives you a completely different looking function made from h of x and f of x. And this last one over here looks something like this, which is also a completely different looking function made from g of x and f of x. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this is helpful.